So I take it you just bought one of these HCO6s and you're pulling your hair out on a number of things, trying to get it wired up properly. Also trying to get to the AT command set and uh, program this thing and utilize it in a project. Well, not to worry, this is a comprehensive guide that is going to step through all of that, so let's go. Okay, so this is my Nerd HCO6 with the extra pin that I added to it. The reason why I did that, and we're not going to need to do it, is uh, the EN pin on the HCO5 does come into play or can come into play whenever using the AT command set. But as you'll see in this project, we can just use the standard four pins because with the HC06, this one automatically starts and allows you to enter uh, AT commands, unlike the HC05, where you have to press a button or uh, put three volts on the EN pin. Okay, so as you can see here, I have your standard Arduino Uno. <clears throat> And we're going to wire it up. I'm going to start with grounds. And I'm going to put it on this rail for any newbies. It sends ground to this entire rail, that strip. And we're going to take 5 volts. And we're going to power it to that rail, this rail here. And just looking on the back of this, double check. You see the VCC in is allowed between uh, essentially 3 and 6 volts, so 5 volts should be fine. And we're limited to 3.3 volts in the RXTX. Pretty clear so far, right? And then transmit, interestingly enough, is going to go to transmit. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but <clears throat> that is port one on the Arduino. Okay. And then <clears throat> receive is where it gets tricky, and receive is where we're going to use the voltage divider. When you power up the HCO6, if you measure TXD, you'll notice there's 3.2 volts and the RXD has 0 volts. And the RX and TX need to be around 3.3 uh, volts. And in order to make sure that happens, we're going to create a voltage divider. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take a 2K resistor, hook that up to ground. We're going to take a 1K resistor, hook that up to the Arduino RCV0 uh, um, a pin. Uh, this is 5 volts. This is why we need to step this down. So it's 5 volts that we're stepping down and sending to the Bluetooth RXD here. And uh, yeah. If you need to make your own voltage divider, I found this very helpful website called Ohm's Law Calculator. O-H-M-S Law Calculator dot com. And f it was able to help me because I wanted to double check some of the resistor sizes some other people were using in these videos. But anyway, what I came up with was a resistor size of uh, 1K. Oops, let's do 1K. See, kilo ohms. And then 2 kilo ohms. And then I press calculate. And then it could tell me that essentially I can take 5 volts and turn it into 3.3. And then there's a helpful diagram as well to understand which one is uh, resistor one and which one is resistor two and again it matters because if you flip these around uh, then the voltage changes actually in this particular case drops quite a bit if you haven't worked with resistors a lot i highly recommend that you find one of these charts it really makes life easy now you still can't read the resistor uh, settings on there well you can always zoom into it but it all looks so dark and black what i use is a loop <clears throat> So this is, I uh, forget the, the website, it's like a scientific website that I went to, uh, but this is like a jeweler's loop, and mine actually has an LED on it. And with it, I don't know if I can do it here with the camera. Let's see if I can find the lens. But uh, you can really get close and 
and look at these resistors and decode uh, what they're saying. So it really makes life easy. Just a pro tip. And if you find yourself always scrounging for resistors or trying to work with old ones, just do what I did. Just go on Amazon, spend $15 and get 1,400 resistors of varying types. Okay, so let's make us a voltage divider. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the ground bus and I am going to plug in this. Was it 1K? Oh, 2K resistor. Yeah. I'll plug it into that terminal strip right there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 1K resistor, plug it into that terminal strip right there, and then I'm going to also plug the other end to this terminal strip. And then this is what we're going to send off to the Arduino. So I'm going to plug in a nice purple color there. Is that the same terminal strip? It is. Okay, then I'm going to plug this into pin 0 RX. Okay, and then on the other side here, and this is where the voltage is actually stepped down and made safe for the RXD on Bluetooth. And I'm going to plug it in right there. So there we go. Um, that's it. Let's plug it up and uh, see what we get. Okay, so now we're going to get the HCO6 in the Arduino plugged into a laptop. We heard it come on, and also the fast flash is normal. Okay, are you ready to write the easiest Arduino program you have ever written? Check this out. So start your Arduino software. Whatever project comes up comes up but just do file new close the old one out and then make sure that you've got the right Arduino board and in our case it's the Arduino Uno okay and then I think for us it's COM7 okay we'll go with that and with the new fresh file, you'll see it just has these two, the two traditional sections, setup and loop, and it's both blank. Now, I have made sure to go ahead and disconnect the uh, pins 1 and 0 on the Arduino to allow the program to be pumped across the USB. But as you can see, uh, pins 1 and 0 have been taken out. And so let's hit... I'm going to zoom back over here a bit, see if I can get both of these in the shot, and do uh, upload. We'll see if it's a happy camper. Okay, we got a green light over there. It looks like it's a happy camper. Okay, so let's see if we were successful. The way we do this is just to pull up a regular serial monitor and the regular Arduino software. No need to use third-party tools like Putty or uh, I forgot the other one that I've heard. But uh, here we're defaulting to COM7, which sounds right. So I'm just going to send a uh, AT command. And it comes back as OK. So that is 100% success. This is where we all get happy, I hope. So uh, there are some other commands that we can uh, enter as well. Now it's a very limited command set. Oops, it's a very limited command set uh, with the uh, HCO6. Uh, let's see, what is uh, what is uh, address? Not no, I can't do address on this one. Version. That's something I can do. Bada boom, bada bing. So there we go. Uh, what else can I tell you here? Let's take a look at some of the other commands the HCO6 can take, uh, and, it, and it, is, it does seem to be very limited to just AT, AT plus version, AT plus name, and then whatever name you want to give your Bluetooth device, uh, AT plus PIN, and then you enter a PIN number. You can also set the BOD, uh, supposedly, on the HCO6, uh, and you do that by AT plus BOD, and then a number, and then here are the, essentially the codes to tell it which BOD rate you want it to support. Okay, so while we're sending AT commands to our HCO6, you'll notice that it stays with the LED light blinking relatively fast. 
Uh, for the HC06, this is not a problem. Again, its default is to uh, be in the AT command set, ready for your commands. This would be an indication of a problem, though, if you were running an HC05. That's the one where you have to hold a button while you power it up uh, or uh, apply 3 volts uh, to the EN pin. A couple of additional notes regarding the HC06. Uh, first off, it's not compatible with uh, Apple or the iPhone. Second is that whenever you power these little boogers up, they are immediately ready to work for you, meaning passing, connecting Bluetooth devices to it and using the uh, RXTX pins to send the UART commands back and forth. So even though you power it up and it defaults, uh, to the command mode to take AT commands. Uh, you don't have to play with the AT commands at all. You can just power it up and just uh, connect with the default. The default name on mine was HC-06 with a password of 1234. I know on uh, I think some older HC-06s uh, it was a name that started with an L but it wasn't the case in, in my case. Okay let's have some fun. Let's take our laptop and connect to the Arduino through the Bluetooth. In order to do that, we're actually going to set up and switch around the uh, receive and transmit to what it, it feels like it should have been to begin with, where it's transmit to receive and receive to transmit. And we'll also have to, uh, we're going to apply a program here in a second. Uh, and again, before we apply the program, we're going to want to unplug those. Uh, I'll let the program go and then plug them back in and see what we got. So. Okay, so let's take a look at the code that we want to push to the, to the Arduino before we connect uh, to it via Bluetooth. What I've written here is, uh, well, let's just go over the section. Uh, essentially some environment variables, the regular setup section, all that's doing here, it's just printing program start. Then whenever uh, the main loop starts, I start an infinite loop. And this whole section here is really just about periodically sending a heartbeat from the Arduino across Bluetooth to the laptop, just to let us know that we've got a connection working from the Arduino to us. And then conversely, this section here is about listening. So if there is anything available from the Bluetooth device to the Arduino, after that, it's going to read it, put it in of type char data in, and print it on the screen. I should point out that w the way it says hello to us, so we're connected to the Bluetooth, which is connected to the Arduino. So the way it connects to, back to us is it uses a standard serial, it uses the regular print line command, it goes essentially out the TX pin here, goes into the receive pin on the on the Bluetooth and then wirelessly to us. Wirelessly. Okay, so remember to unhook these pins before you try to push any software to it. So we'll hit the upload button here. Green bars, green bars. Okay, looks like it's a happy camper. And then what we're going to do, again, like I said before, we're going to send essentially the transmit pin here to the receive on the Bluetooth. And the receive pin there we're going to send to the transmit on the Bluetooth. Okay, so how do we get a Windows 10 laptop to connect via Bluetooth to our Arduino? First, we're going to search for Bluetooth, Bluetooth and other settings. We're going to say add Bluetooth or other device. We're going to click on Bluetooth. What we're looking for is uh, HC06. There it is. It's going to ask us for a password which is one, two, three, four, connect. Okay, it says device is ready to go and paired. Now you'll notice that the 
light is still blinking quickly on the HCO6, which is fine. But we'll see that that'll change here in a moment. So we're going to say done. <clears throat> and the way we're going to communicate to our uh, Arduino through the Bluetooth is by using PuTTY. But before we can use PuTTY, we have to know which port <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the HCO6 has been added to. So it emulates a COM port. So the way you find which COM port it was associated with is you choose more Bluetooth options. This comes up and then you look at COM ports. And then you will see one, it's, it's assigned two. Uh, COM3 for incoming, COM4 for outgoing. COM4 for outgoing. So we're going to keep an eye on that, okay? So I've got PuTTY already set up. And we are on Bluetooth 4. So I'm just going to load that. Again, the speed is 9600. I'm going to open. And what I'm expecting to see is the heartbeat coming from our software to us. And there it is. So there is a milliseconds to the current time. And it says Arduino says hi. So this is the heartbeat from the Arduino across the Bluetooth to us. And, but we can also can type back to it. We can say hello. And so our characters are actually uh, leaving the laptop, going to the Bluetooth and going into the Arduino. Okay, and to show that I'm not cheating or anything, uh, I am gonna disconnect the USB. I guess I could disconnect it from there too, because I do have the uh, Arduino and all this set up with just a power cord now, okay? And so no wires other than power going to that, and it looks like, oh, that's interesting. It uh, forced a reboot of the Arduino we're still getting the heartbeats uh, from the uh, from the Arduino. Let's see if we can still type. Hello. And yes, we can. So that is a 100% Bluetooth connection between our laptop and uh, and the Arduino. So let's look at another code example. I've wired up an LED. A cathode minus goes to ground. The anode goes to a 220 ohm resistor and that is jumped to pin 8 on the Arduino. What I've written here is an LED toggle to toggle the LED wirelessly using Bluetooth. So let's look over the highlights. Uh, the main thing is this data in variable that's going to store individual characters coming from Bluetooth is of type char. Okay, we're going to also keep track of the current LED status and have it printed back to us what the status is supposed to be. So here's the main uh, the setup section. Serial is 9600. We define pin 8 as output. In the main loop section, we define a loop here and what it's going to keep an eye on to see is see if anything is available from Bluetooth. If, it's, if there's something available, then it's going to read it, the, again, of type char, put it in data in, and what I've programmed here is essentially if it's a lowercase x, uh, if it's on, turn it off, and if it's off, turn it on, essentially. So let's see how we did. So the Bluetooth is paired to the laptop, and I'm going to start PuTTY. It's still on COM port 4. And we will see if we can send it our single command of X to turn the LED light on. And it works. Amazingly thrilling. You feel it? I felt it. I can do this all day long. Okay, well, maybe not all day. Okay, it should be about this time you're sick and tired of taking these pins and unplugging them and plugging them back in every time you want to code your Arduino. Let's take a look at a solution. And the solution is this, the software serial.h library. It's going to allow us to take our traditional digital pins and use them for UART connections. Let's take a look at the code a little closer. Okay, so obviously we start with include software serial.h. Uh, I go ahead and define the object 
uh, here. I call it my soft serial. And in here we have two parameters that are important. One sets the, the receive pin and the other sets the transmit pin. And again, these are digital pins two and three. Okay, I'm gonna skip some of the regular serial stuff that you know already. And then my software serial is going to be set up exactly like a regular serial port. It's got a dot begin 9600. It supports much faster baud rates. Um, it's, uh, if you have more than one listening port, so you can define a whole bunch of pins, like at my software serial, I could have my software serial one, you know, two, three, four, five, uh, and as long as I put them on different ports, but you can only deal with one at a time, one of these objects at a time. And in order to tell it, uh, to say of all the software serial objects that I've opened, listen to this one you know, as you go to check the, uh, if there's any input coming from the device. So down here, what I have done, and, and actually, and, and we didn't even need listen in this example because I only have one uh, object defined here. So it's, it's, it's just listening to the, the first and only one by default anyway. So what I've programmed here is a procedure that it will, uh, I called it UART send, where it just sends, it's going to send a command. So in this case, it sends the AT command. So we're going to focus on that. So what it's going to do is it actually just prints it just like it would with a regular serial port. And you were using the monitor to, to see what's going on. You can actually send the command uh, to the uh, HCO6 doing that. Uh, and this procedure uh, just mirrors what's going to the uh, HCO6. It just mirrors it to serial so I can see what's going on. And then after it sends that command, it goes, you know what, let's uh, uh, do a receive check. And also there's a, a timeout that I've set here as well of uh, two seconds. And so if we follow up on that, this is going to look very familiar as well. So I'm doing some cutesy things with time to make sure I don't exceed a certain time. But the important part of this is, again, just like it's serial, check if something is available in the buffer. If there's something there, read it out. This is of type char. Data in is of type char. Uh, you'll see in the example here in a minute that um, I like to understand the individual characters that are coming out. So, I, so I, I print the individual character and I put a little uh, vertical bar there to understand that these are individual character chunks. And then after a certain timeout, then it uh, exits out. So let's take a look at the example and see how it works. Okay, so I'm getting ready to upload my code to the Arduino and as you can see the pins I'm remaining plugged in to digital ports uh, two and three. All right, now I'm going to upload the code. And this feels so good not having to reach in and touch the pins at all. So let's take a look at the monitor and see what is coming up. So again, it reboots, but it sent the AT command it came back okay, and remember I'm printing the vertical bars between the individual characters that are coming back. I sent AT version, and it came back with an okay Linbor. So anyway, long story short, it looks like it's working. So if you've been watching closely, there are two features of using software serial that are outstanding. One is that we don't have to uh, change the pins back and forth. Uh, we don't have to put transmit to receive and receive to transmit. Also, we now have a way to send commands using our software. So we sent it an AT command. We sent it the AT version command. We programmed it with the Bluetooth name that we wanted and password that we wanted. So that's extremely great. There's two more things I need to point out as well. Programming is not going to be successful of your HC06 if you have an active session with it. So remember, uh, 
if you have an active session with your HC06, it's no longer in AT command mode at all. You have to be out of that for it to be able to take those commands. Uh, the second thing is whenever you send commands uh, to the device using software serial, make sure to use dot print and not print line or print LN and you will have better results, successful results. The software serial library is explained very well on the Arduino website, but one thing that I really wanted to point out to you is this, is not all Arduino cards uh, support software serial the same, and you need to be uh, conscious of the fact that there are certain pins that are on and off limits for software serial to work successfully. So, for example, uh, I'm using a Mega uh, 2560 and several other projects and so it's only going to be supported by certain pins. I don't know this may be common knowledge but it wasn't to me. Whenever you want to print individual uh, variables of type char to your serial monitor you need to encapsulate it in a string command. Uh, I did not do that and it printed a bunch of garbage on the screen and it was very concerning for probably a little too long for me, but uh, just another pro tip if you didn't know that already. Okay, so that's everything you wanted to know and more about how to connect a Bluetooth HC06 to your Arduino projects. I've really enjoyed making this for you guys. Goodness knows I have benefited plenty from the maker community posting things online. So in return, I hope I have saved you a lot of time, and best of luck uh, with you and your projects.